Maybe this time a year ago we thought we were going to get to more than 10,000. For a long time we'd thought 1,000 to 10,000. This time last year maybe we had the first inklings that we might escape into 20, 30, 40,000 units. But it's certainly nowhere near the million mark. This one or two order of magnitude overrun in demand has forced us to change uh, our entire approach to the business, indeed, to change our business model. We've we changed ourselves in, in the, the two months before we launched. We changed ourselves from a fairly conventional manufacturing company or a commissioner of manufacturing into a more, uh, into what we describe as an IP licensing model. So rather than making the, obviously nobody makes boards themselves anymore, but rather than commissioning the manufacturer of the boards ourselves, what we do now is we license the both the design of the board and the use of our trade mark uh, to, to co-exclusively to our two partners, uh, RS Components and Premier Funnel. We never really saw any reason why it shouldn't be possible to build the Raspberry Pi in the UK. It's a comparatively simple piece of hardware. Much of the assembly is automated on, you know, we've always said, you know, why does it matter where the robots are? You know, why does it matter if the robots are in a shed in China or, you know, somewhere in the UK? Um, the fantastic thing that happened to us halfway through this year was that we discovered that we were able to build these devices as economically uh, in South Wales, uh, in a Sony factory. So not just anywhere in South Wales, but in a first tier manufacturing facility in South Wales for the same kind of cost structure that we were able to achieve in China. And so it was obviously a large amount of work went into to making that happen. Uh, but from September, from September onwards, we've been shipping hundreds of thousands of units a year of UK uh, a month of UK manufactured pies. We've had quite a lot of interest from um, emerging markets, um, although I think that probably in the year to, in, in, the, in our first year, that's where we've been weakest. So I think we, you know, we haven't um, sold as many as we might have liked in, uh, in China, um, in India, in Brazil. We are incredibly strong in Russia. There's obviously a, a great tradition of computing in Russia and I think that um, an and experimentation in Russia, and I think that we've really fed into that with the Pi. Uh, we have some initiatives going on in our second year to try and address the things that we think have been keeping us out of China. I think that's primar primarily a language and cultural barrier. And some of the things that have been keeping us out of India and Brazil, and those are logistics and tariff um, issues. The source of our happiness about people cloning the pie is is that you know we see our mission as getting um, affordable, open educational computing out into the wild. You know we're we're a not for profit. We don't have shareholders. We don't have shareholders. We need to pay dividends to. Uh, to the extent that um, computers of that sort end up in the wild, um, we win. You know, to the extent that the, the, you know, it accomplishes our goals, whether or not we do it. There was always, I think I, I may have mentioned when I spoke to you before, we always had this sort of maybe this sneaking feeling in the back of our minds that all we would have to do would be to announce we were going to do the pie, and then someone would swoop in and do it for us, and then we'd get everything without all, all of the back-breaking toil of actually bringing the pie to market. What's really interesting, though, is in the first year, nobody has really managed to get anywhere near our price point. Um, nobody has really managed, uh, even within a factor of two of our price point, nobody's really managed to get um, anywhere close to our performance level. So, um, yeah, we, I'm, I'm sure it will happen at some point, uh, and, and when it does, as long as it's an open platform, as long as it's a platform that encourages education, I think we'll be very relaxed about it. My favorite Pi application is uh, called Pi in the Sky. Uh, the Raspberry Pi name just seems to be a pun, a factory for puns. Pi in the Sky is uh, it's a guy called Dave Ackerman in the south of England. Uh, he put a Pi under a weather balloon and sent it up to uh, 40 kilometers up and was sending down live pictures uh, from the edge, of, at the edge of space. Now, I'm a real space cadet, so that's the sort of thing that I really enjoy. Um, I think that the broad, yeah, there's, there's a broad spectrum of things that you might call automation applications. You know, people using it to automate stuff around their home, people using it to control robots. Uh, we've seen a lot of people using them to control camera rigs, which was something that I to, to provide a, a cheap way of doing sort of tracking camera rigs, um, uh, time-lapse photography, these various, um, th those applications are, I think are really, really interesting. I think we're seeing a, um, a, swing, round, a swing round from um, being primarily a hobbyist platform to being what we wanted to be, which was an educational platform, but also we're starting to see industrial applications. So we're starting to see people design the pie in to other industrial products, you know, factory control products, home automation products. Um, I think we want to try and address some of our geographic deficits. Um, it would be nice if at the end of the year we're selling strongly in at least one of um, Brazil, India, China. I think we have a good strategy for China, so it'll be interesting to see if we can get one of Brazil or India as well. We obviously are careful never to talk about new models. It's one of the interesting things is that we've we've been forced by the scale of our success to become a little more corporate in our in our approach to communicating about you know, where we're going next. And we have partners who at any given time have millions of dollars of inventory and flight, and therefore even if we did have a new model, we would have to be very careful about talking about it. 
In practice, I think that there's a lot of value that we can extract from the existing platform. So I think we're much more likely to spend our money on improving the current platform, which is, gives a benefit to those million people rather than orphaning them. Um, we're much more likely to spend money on that than on, say, jumping to some new faster chip.